to, to start off, I do want to talk about Waking Nightmare a little bit. You know, I want to know how you got involved with that project. And, you know, was there anything particular about that particular role that excited you um, about taking it on? Um, okay, so uh, when I was approached, um, I was approached by uh, the director, I guess. And he had seen my work and really wanted to work with me. And um, so... Uh, I um, I loved the part. I thought it was a great role. Um, I'm always interested in the character more so than what the project is. I mean, I mean, you could say a project, this is going to be a hit or, you know, I, I mean, what would excite me more is that there's really good people involved and that really excites me to work with uh, people um, or character, you know, like really yeah. good characters. And so I felt this role had a really uh, great stretch. Did, have you seen the the movie yet? Yeah, yeah. I, I your your character actually is my favorite character because and I'm not just saying that because you're you're I'm talking to you. It just felt like it had the most most depth um as far as the the film itself. Thank you very much. You know, um that is I really really appreciate it. I'm glad you saw it because I was going to I've always said that people like a lot of them people know me from the 80s yeah. from Bill and Ted's as a princess or they know me from Better Off Dead or even uh Last American Virgin. If if you love those films and you want to remember me as that you may not want to see this because this will change <laughs> your mind. It is definitely like uh you might be kind of weary, but I'm really a nice person just saying that. Um but I really love the, the psychology and the depth that I could go with this character. Uh, it's Danielle is the role of, a, of it's, she's just got so much range. At least I saw that in the part and I was able to play, you know, and I was able to do things that other directors wouldn't have hired me for, you know, they might've thought, uh, I mean, I was kind of surprised actually when I was, you know, offered the part because I thought, wow, you have a lot of faith in me as an actress to be able to do this. And I would love to do it. But, you know, obviously a lot of people go, well, let me see what you've done before. The closest I can say, I did a role of a character called um, in, called Summer Girl, but it never was like this. This character, you've never, if you are watching this movie, you've never seen me like this, ever. Yeah, yeah my, my only complaint, and it really doesn't come from from your role or your character it the movie kind of seemed a little bit on the short side um mm. like like the runtime is i think like an hour maybe an hour and 10 minutes with credits uh so i was kind of curious from from your perspective you know is there anything that you would have changed or maybe added to kind of add a little bit more depth to your character or the film in general um that's a good question i'm gonna say something that's kind of interesting um Originally in the film, the first, there was a scene that was deleted. Um, my daughter originally was in the film mm -hmm. and um, there was an unfortunate incident, something that I'm not gonna talk about now, which was actually a waking nightmare for myself. I mean, there was a waking nightmare within the waking nightmare. Um, my daughter's a professional actress. She's worked in a lot of things, but this particular uh, situation didn't work out. And I have to say that it has to do with the directors not being able to show the material. I mean, if you're a professional, you're going to show your the actor's material before they perform it. This was not the case. I mean, in that case, uh, it was it should be shown when you're given the whole script and you can decide. But anyway, regardless of that, um, I, there I think there were scenes that they omitted that they wanted to perhaps put in. Um, and I think that the film I mean, I, I think that the fact that you watched it and you wanted there to be more yeah. um, is good indication. Like this film definitely gives you a ride. Um, and I also think that, I mean, I don't know about you, like I haven't seen a lot of super indie films, but I feel like it took us into a place that we haven't seen before. The and, and the fact, first of all, also me having a college age daughter, that was the first time that I was able to have that I've had, you know, younger uh, people as daughters but to have a college age daughter daughter the relationship was such a cool thing to have as a mother daughter because you could really be honest and like look let's there's parents who are trying to help their kids when they go through struggles and there's a different conversation you have when they're 16 and when they're 20 and when they're 25 like different conversations happen and I felt like that was what made it kind of stand out as far as a 
age age thing. Like I I think we don't get to see those conversations a lot. And also a parent's struggling to help their kids and that help may not be always the right help. So it's a very interesting movie. I think it's gonna get people to think. Um, I think parents should see it, but <laughs> I don't know if they'll, they'd be into seeing this much horror. It is uh, definitely uh, it, it, for the horror genre. Well, yeah. I, I I definitely appreciate you being candid and kind of and sharing that with me. Uh, you know, obviously, like you mentioned, this is a horror film. You have a few of those under your belt, you know, and, uh, you know, some classics, if you will. I know you Thank mentioned you. Bill and Ted, Better Off Dead, but but I want to talk a little bit about Terror Vision while, while I have you. Um, you know, <laughs> has a cult Thank following. You. It's it's uh, celebrated for its its charm. You know, I, f I feel like it is finally starting to get that credit that it's due because of streaming services and, you know, people mm -hmm. are actually able to obtain it. Do you have any interesting tidbits, you know, behind the scenes stories about that particular film? Oh, I love that film. I, I want to share something kind of cool. First of all, that film, I wanted to play Susie Putterman so bad because I always wanted to play kind of a punk rocker girl. And I knew that my voice and my looks and it just what I did not see that my future is being cast. I mean, you just don't. I wanted to, but I really was like, who's going to hire me for that? Yeah. And when I got the audition, I was so excited to audition for it because I was like, wow, somebody's allowing me to even audition for this character. You know, they would give this usually to somebody else. So I went in and I played it so I just played Susie, like I just got it, you know? I A lot of my roles I have to hold back. You, I mean, you can see how much I talk. And I didn't always talk this much, but I never showed my intelligence in a lot of my characters. And so what was so cool is being able to show my intelligence as Susie, who was street smart. She got it. She got things, she understood things. And I really appreciated the opportunity that Ted Nicolau gave me to audition. And when I did it and he saw that character in me, I was just over the moon. I was so happy. And the film itself is, we, all of us knew it was tongue in cheek. All of us knew it was over the top and um, a parody of the eighties. Yeah but it was made in the eighties. So nobody got that it was a parody because people were just coming up on, this is the eighties. Like they were excited to be in the eighties. So it, it was amazing that it took so long. Like when it came out, nobody got it. And we were really disappointed. I mean, literally Mary Warnoff and I, and Garrett Graham, like we thought it was so funny, which is why we did it. But because it wasn't hitting then it is, I, all I can tell you is if you know Terrorvision and you love it, bam you know I, I thank you thank you you're you're my peeps you know like i really appreciate it because that film um was not appreciated when it came out and now it's just great i'm happy for ted who wrote it and directed it uh that it's finding a resurgence and that people get it now like they yeah. enjoy it so yeah i think it, like i mentioned the charm the timing um it's it all it blends perfectly the horror and the comedy you know not only in that movie but like other films that you've done is it difficult kind of blending those two aspects together when you're pay, uh, playing such like a a crucial pivotal pivotal role in those films well isn't that life yeah, right fair. <laughs> one minute no one minute you are so serious and then the next minute something happens and you just bust out of it so it it's very natural to me that um you know th that happened in in waking nightmare um there's certain films that you can't do that like the ted bundy film you know ted bundy i did um i did a cameo in that and that i had to pay respect to the reality of the tragedy you know so you there you go like you wouldn't want a light moment there this is like reality you know i mean reality in a in a way like the tone you know you just gotta find the tone um and even in um in Amityville Murders, I was able to find the comedy at the beginning, which was the um, the character um, I was playing was a Long Island woman who was wanted everything to look good and everything to you know be good with her family. Um, 
and her her dynamic with her husband and you know and, and the chaos that happens can be light but there's always that undertone of seriousness like anything bad can happen i mean that was about like an abusive relationship so yeah. you know you try to stay light on the outside but on the inside you're always ready for the bomb to drop so that character was also very in intense you know yeah and it, it also kind of makes me think of um your episode on on freddie's nightmares uh you know the the bride wore red it's it has a little bit of that camp a little bit of the the seriousness yeah. but yeah. it's it's blended so well um that oh. that that show is is kind of known for the twist and i was mm -hmm. kind of curious from from your perspective you know when you're handed that script the first time you know what did you think of of the the finale and um were you caught off guard did you see it coming like how was that experience Yes, I was caught off guard, even though I had the script seriously. Okay, so um, the scenes that really struck me in that in that episode, first of all, it was girl centric, which is was not the norm, N never the norm. As far as like, you know, a girl would be the victim and she died and that was it or the ingenue. But so that a particular episode, I really appreciate you saying that because again, it was very interesting to have a role that you're following my story and oh my gosh, I have so many emotional ups and downs and things with my dad and then a flashback and um, and who's cheating? I'm cheating and they're cheating. And you know, like, it's just like a whole, it covered the whole gamut. I really wondered how the writers even came up with that. You know, it yeah. was wild rod. Um, and at the end, the chainsaw, okay. <laughs> and I was like, what is happening? And I I don't know like when I did it I didn't really see it the way it was when I watched it yeah um you know I was like handcuffed or whatever to the bed or something and but I think you feel for me like you kind of don't want me to die I think and in, in the end um it's just I just play this girl who has like no clue like how she's coming across and I don't know. I just think there's a lot of girls who like they they'll do a lot of things and they it, I mean in reality in life people they there's a lot of you know people who do things and they don't realize how it comes off to others so in that episode i think it's the same deal she's a bride and she wants to you know have it her way and uh you know and then she's you know disappointed and then she's got her dad her whole life is wrapped up in her family and she doesn't realize it's their you know their life yeah. when she like go and grow up and she doesn't grow up and then she has these nightmares and so it's kind of a, a struggle uh oh that means does that mean i have to go uh no i'm good i'm good um it just means that i have uh, the the struggles you know yeah. so anyway well yeah i i loved it and and just to kind of wrap up you know i think we're 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 kind of skirting around this topic and uh i guess to kind of bring it all home you you've played a, a a wide variety of characters and and like you said in the beginning you know that's kind of what you look for is is there a common thread that connects you know these roles and uh, how do you infuse your own personality? Because I do notice and, you know, rewatching the, the Freddy's Nightmares and, and Waking Nightmare, there is personality within these roles. And I, I just kind of wonder how you kind of put that together. You know, everything as an actor comes from you. I mean, it's it, it, you're the muse, it goes through you. So whatever the information is to me, like I might associate it with something in my life that has nothing to do with what I'm doing at all but I can bring reality to it, or I can understand the emotion or the feeling through my personal experience. Um, you know, it, it's like if, it, it, you know, if you're playing a Shakespeare role and, you know, you're a two-year-old and you're not given a cookie, the tragedy feels the same as a two-year-old than it does to Shakespeare, who's, you know, <laughs> doesn't get his, you know, the the Shakespearean part that, that needs that, uh, that, that, closure so I mean you everyone's got their own version of what makes them tick and the emotion and so the thing I really try not to do is I try not to be redundant and try to always stretch out of my comfort zone um and I hope that is seen I I, I would hate for my roles to be predictable my main goal is for everything to be a surprise something you've never seen before and to stretch outside my comfort zone yeah Excellent. Yeah, I definitely I definitely feel that kind of going through your catalog uh, here at Cinedump. We let the doers know how they're doing. And Diane, you're doing just fine. Thank you so much for your time. Thank just, you. 
I ultimately just wanted to give you some different questions. You know, I love Bill and Ted. I love Better Off Dead. But uh, yeah, Terror Vision and, and Freddy's Nightmares, that's where my heart is. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me on your show. And by the way, I love your video wall. Great. <laughs> yeah, I bow son. to it. Thank you. But thank you. you still have it. Yes. My my son loves it as well. He think he calls it the video store. So it we is. Got, it we is. got the video store. So thank you I'm so much. Son. All right. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show anytime. All right. Of course. Bye. Thank you.